The season is winding down and Premier Preps has coverage of NorCal regional action from both baseball and softball. Bradshaw Christian looks to continue its historic season. Dixon Softball looks to get back to the NorCal Championship game, plus championship coverage from Oakmont and Central Catholic. And I'm honored to be joined by softball coaching legend Mary Jo Truesdale from Sheldon High School as she rides off into the sunset. You're watching Premier Preps. Welcome to another episode of Premier Preps. I am your host, Nick Pecorero. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. It's our penultimate show of the season, and we've got some more great highlights on the menu, plus NorCal bracket updates from both baseball and softball. But we're going to start this week's show in Elk Grove, where the Bradshaw Christian pride has been a small school power in the Sac Joaquin section for several years, but... Somehow they managed to raise the bar in 2024, winning its seventh Sac Joaquin section championship last week. The Pride drew a two seed in the NorCal bracket where they would host the Branson Bulls out of the North Coast section. The champion in their section looking to shake things up in the regional round. Bradshaw Christian looking for win number 30 in the NorCal opener on Tuesday. Fresh off of its seventh Sac Joaquin section title last week, Bradshaw Christian looking for win number 30 and a trip to the NorCal semis against North Coast section champ Branson. Top one, the pride doing things with the glove as third baseman Max Wolf snares a liner to end the first. Base is juiced for Bradshaw Christian in the bottom half, but Branson first baseman Caden Gustafson flips it to pitcher Grayson Roberts to beat Roberto Garduno to the bag. Nice play to get out of the jam. Pride starter Alex Crosno was dealing on Tuesday. This punch out was one of four for Crosno. Five innings, only one hit allowed on the afternoon. And after getting the strikeout to end the third, he goes to work with the stick and executes a perfectly placed hit and run. That pushes Max Wolf over to third base with nobody out. And that brings up Micah Nicholson. And all this dude does is produce runs. His 35th RBI of the year makes it one nothing pride. And the very next batter, Landon Carter. He's no stranger to bringing runs home. A base hit to left, Crosno comes in to score and Bradshaw leads two nothing. Now you might have seen Branson's Mo Jacoby getting jiggy with it in the cutaway, and whatever those moves were, they seem to do the trick. Jacoby laces a leadoff double to right to start the fourth. He would steal third, and then the next batter, Jackson Kayser, does his job with the sacrifice fly to left. Jacoby comes in to score, and the Bulls are on the board 2-1. to one. Branson starter Grayson Roberts enhancing the argument that pitchers are athletes too. The sophomore battled through five and a third, limiting the damage from Bradshaw Christian. And the Bulls have something going in the fifth. Runners on for Holden Kane. The freshman skies one out into the gap, but center fielder Brandon Burden runs it down and keeps the runners put at first and second. The Pride escaped the jam unharmed in the fifth. Top six now, Ethan Rickert in for Alex Crosno, and he gets some help from his defense. Max Wolf making plays all over the field on Tuesday. Bottom six, Branson trying to keep it within striking distance. Wilson went on in relief, one out. He gets the ordinary pop up to third. But wait, Tom Lardner catches the Bradshaw runner snoozing and doubles him off at first. And the Bulls still have a shot. Just a one run game in the seventh, tying run in scoring position. But Ethan Rickard says good night now. It's win number 30 on the season for Bradshaw Christian and the Pride advances to the NorCal semis. We just put the ball in play and just have amazing, amazing defense. Always have good pitching, always throwing strikes. We just make the plays. Keep that good defense, putting the ball in play, hustling. Just having good days out there.
Well, speaking of championship teams, the Dixon Rams softball team is definitely a program on the rise. The Rams recently had six players announced for the upcoming Optimist All-Star Game. Amon Rosenberger, Ashley Garcia, Audrey Graham, Felicia Lipinski, Caitlin Hendershot, and Cameron Elliott. All of those players were sophomores on the 2022 Rams team, which also reached the NorCal Championship game. That group looking to get the job done this time as seniors and standing in their way was the sec Central Coast Section champion Cappuccino Mustangs of San Bruno. These two teams met earlier this year with the Rams shutting out the Mustangs on two hits. The rematch in the D3 NorCal semis happening on Thursday. SJS champ Dixon beat CCS champ Cappuccino of San Bruno back in April. Thursday's game had a whole lot more at stake. Winner to the NorCal final, top one. The Mustangs get things going with a leadoff knock from Lily Thomas. She beats out an infield single, but Dixon gets out of trouble as Avery Motroni lines into an unassisted double play, courtesy of Ashley Garcia. Nice play to get out of the jam. Bottom one now, Cappuccino starter Lola Sierra started off hot. She had two punch outs in the first inning, but Dixon starter Felicia Lipinski, she fired a two hitter with 14 Ks the last time these two met, and she was getting stronger by the inning on Thursday. Bottom two, Rams senior Cameron Elliott leads off, and Cam goes ham on this pitch. A double down the left field line, trying to get a rally going for Dixon but Lola Sierra works her way around it and gets two more punch outs to end the second. Bottom three now, bases full of Rams, nobody out and nowhere to put Ashley Garcia. She draws the bases loaded walk and Caitlin Hendershot scores the first run of the game. Dixon leads one nothing, but the Rams weren't done. Same inning, two outs now for Olivia Gomez. That's how you want to drive in runs in a NorCal playoff game. And Dixon jumps in front three zip after three. Lipinski, meanwhile, putting up some more goose eggs. No runs allowed through five. But Cappuccino goes to the pen now. Lily Thomas in relief, trying to keep the Mustangs close. No hits allowed in three and a third from Thomas, who gets her team back to the plate. And then she leads off the sixth with another single. The freshman went three for four on Thursday. And with two outs, fellow freshman Dana Motroni bloops a single past the infield. Thomas comes in to score, and Cap has some life. Same inning, runners at the corners for Catalina Nalawafe. Another little teardrop to the outfield. It'll look like a line drive in the stat sheet. That makes it three to two after six. But in the seventh, last chance for the Mustangs, Felicia Lipinski closes the door on a complete game win. And for the second time in the past three seasons, Dixon is in the NorCal championship game. The thing that stood out to me the most is definitely always going to be our energy. Like we never back down no matter what the score is. It, it's like in our mind, it's always a zero zero ball game and we never back down, never give up and we never stop talking. So I think that's one of the hugest things with this team for real. Well, Saturday afternoon concluded the prep softball season with NorCal Championship games. Let's take a look around the regional brackets. Upsets abound in Division I. Amador Valley handed St. Francis of Mountain View its first loss of the season after starting 28-0. And the Dons reached the finals where they finished the job as an eighth seed, pushing past Oak Ridge, the sixth seed in D1. In D2, another eight seed, Capital Christian, the defending NorCal champ, goes back to back, rebounding nicely from a Sac Joaquin section finals defeat. The Cougars take down Willow Glen for their second straight regional title. In D3, we just showed you the Dixon Rams charge into the NorCal finals, but they would run into a juggernaut of a Sutter Huskies team which completes a perfect 30-0 season for the program's second NorCal championship. To Division IV, top-seeded Everett Alvarez of Salinas once endured a seven-game losing streak in the middle of this season, but the Eagles run the table to close the year on a nine-game win streak, including a CCS title and its first-ever NorCal crown. 
And finally in D5, top seeded Big Valley Christian of Modesto takes down Christopher of Gilroy to win its second NorCal crown in the past three seasons. We'll have all the regional baseball championship info later on in the show. Well, you can't think about softball in this area without thinking about the Sheldon Huskies and what that program has done since the school opened in the late 90s. Nine section championships since 2002, all of them coming under my next guest in an area where the softball fields have been historically rich with talent. Mary Jo Truesdale is an icon to the game. She's built a Hall of Fame coaching career and now she's riding off into the sunset. Mary Jo was nice enough to join me on Premier Preps this week. Head coach Mary Jo Truesdale breaking out the marbles for a win. She always has her team ready this time of year. Marbles. Got the marbles. All right, this week's guest really needs no introduction, but we're going to give it our best shot here. She is a legend in the softball community here in the Sac Joaquin section and beyond. The longtime head coach of Sheldon Softball, who when you think of softball in this section, you, you can't help but think of what Sheldon has done. Nine section titles all under my next guest. Uh, I'm honored and I have a privilege of being joined by Mary Jo Truesdale. Coach, thank you so much for hanging out with us this week. Well, thank you for having me. This is lovely. Well, let's get right into it. Um, you posted something on Facebook this last week saying that uh, you're you're heading off into the sunset. You know, you're 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 retiring from coaching, which I think I may speak for uh, quite a few people when we say we have some mixed emotions about that. You know, you are. Uh, you, obviously, it's very well deserved, and and we're very happy for you to be able to 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 retire and and get to enjoy that life now. And we're also sad that we're not going to be able to see you in the dugout when we cover Sheldon games anymore. So, congratulations on that. And you know, what, was this something that you had had planned? Was it something in the works, or is something that was kind of like you know, when the time is right, you'll know? I I think pretty much it was when the time is right, I was going to know. You know, I thought a little bit about it for the past few years, um, and it was a difficult decision to make. Um, and I thought about it during the season, and I said, no, I really don't want to think about it because the focus has to be on the team. And I always decide at the end of every season if it's a good thing for me to do to continue. Um, I especially for about the last 10 to 15 years um, as I've gone into my 60s and my 70s. It's just time. Um, you know, I think uh, you just kind of know. I mean, there would never be a right time for me. I would love to coach until I'm 100. Uh, you know, I it's really difficult to say goodbye. But there's no good time. Yeah. When you know, you know, I guess. What, uh, what, what do you plan to do in retirement? What's in, what's in store for the next chapter? Well, I'll be back for Alumni Day. <laughs> I do know that, and I'll be back for playoffs. Um, I plan to visit my family more. They live in Michigan, all of my sisters. Uh, I go back there uh, three times a year, and so I'll probably make a few more trips. Um, I'll play a little bit more golf. Um, I work out at my club, so I'll do a little bit more of that. I'll get to the beach more often. I love Carlsbad. That's one of my favorite places to go. So I'll do that. Uh, have more lunches with friends and former coaches and, you know, former teachers and, you know, just relax a little bit. And, and you know, I'll be available. I mean, I'm only a phone call or a text away, as I told the players. And, you know, depending upon who takes over the program, you know, I'm available. What 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 made you fall in love with the game of softball? And 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 beyond that, like what inspired you to become a coach? Well, when I was young uh, in elementary school, we had a uh, a PE teacher named Mrs. Otten, and she was um, a single mom raising two daughters. She put together a the original travel ball softball team for us in the summer and would drive us around in my dad's station wagon around southeastern Michigan 
uh, when we were about middle school and high school age, um, and we would play against other towns uh, that had uh, teams like ours. And that was pretty much before travel ball started. There were no travel ball teams where we were. And so we just played softball. And she taught us so much about the game and life and working hard and just how to do things the right way. And I wanted to give back as a coach when I got older. And then when I moved to California, the JV softball position was open at Elk Grove. I had already been a varsity head coach in, in Michigan and realized how hard that was to build a program. And uh, when I got the JV job at Elk Grove, I thought, well, this will this will be fun. I can just be a JV coach and develop kids and get them ready for varsity. And if they want to take the kids to varsity, that's okay. I'll be okay with it because I know what that's like. Um, and I'll just do what I do and build character and, and I'll just do that the rest of my life. Well, within a year, I was the head coach at Elk Grove and and then Sheldon opened and I had that opportunity and it was really difficult to leave Elk Grove. We had a great team and I really wanted to stay back at Elk Grove one more year with that group, but um, it was either go to Sheldon or not go to Sheldon. That was pretty much what was proposed to me. Either you go or you don't go. And I really wanted to open up the new school and start a program from scratch. And so I did. And we opened with freshmen and sophomores and we went varsity because why not? And uh, there were only two teams at the school that went varsity the first year. And that those were the softball team and the, ba the women's basketball team. So, and that was all she wrote. We just kind of, by 2002, we won our first section championship. And it was just exciting. What's something that you have had to adapt through your coaching style throughout the years? And what is one thing that you have consistently preached from day one? Well, from day one, you've got to take care of the little things. You know, whether it's tying your shoe, whether it's packing your bag the night before, whether it's, you know, taking care of your homework, you know, that might not seem like a little thing, but it is. You've got to take care of all of the little things or the big things like league championships, winning the important games. Not that everybody says every game is the same, but we all know it's not true. I mean, there is a lot of stress in certain games more than other games. Um, you've coached long enough, you know that you want to approach the game with the same mentality, but I mean, there's buildup. Just those things, you know, following through. Um, that's that's the biggest thing that I've preached, I think. And then how about something that you've had to adapt to? How, how, anything that you kind of had to, you know, uh, change up a little bit throughout the years? Yeah. I think early on, I didn't listen as well as I could have. It was always, I was the structure. And I think structure is really important. But the one thing that I've done better as I've gotten older, and I preach this to anybody I mentor, and that is to listen, really listen carefully, because you can learn a lot from these young women. Every player is so different. Um, and you, you can't approach every player the same. I mean, that's just not doable. And in the old days, you pretty much did approach every player the same. You know, it was my way or the highway. And uh, the only thing constant about life is change. And that's the one thing that I preach to them. And that's what I told them over and over and over again. And if you can't adapt to change, you're not going to live a very happy life because life is going to be full of changes. Well, you've certainly come up with uh, a, a few traditions that I've noticed at Sheldon. One is uh, handing out marbles at the end of the game. I, I got one this year for, for what I 
for what how I deserved it, I don't know, but I, I have it. I keep it in my camera bag, and I take it wherever I go whenever I cover a game. It's always special to me, so thank you for that. Um, what what started that tradition? Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, it started at Elk Grove High School. I, I needed to come up with something tangible to to give to the players after we won a game. And so the thought just came to my mind that we're going to play for all the marbles. And so I started to make up these wild stories about where these marbles came from and uh, that they came from all different countries. And I searched high and low for them and I would write this up and send them little notes about them. And it was, it was pretty, it took a lot of time back in the day, but you know, I would write them during my prep period and uh, send them with a TA out to them. And it was pretty fun. One year before playoffs, I was sitting there and another player was in my room and and I was getting organized for playoffs and I dropped my marbles and I said, oh, damn, I lost my marbles. She just started laughing. I hate when I lose my marbles. It happens more often than you think. I know. I said, <laughs> it's not the first time. Well, like I said, I'm, I'm keeping mine forever. It's in my camera bag. That's where it stays. Um, and, I, and I love the attention to detail that you put in there. It's just like you said, that's the, one of the things that you've preached from day one is pay attention to the little things. And that attention that you gave them, just putting these little stories and notes with each of their marbles and everything, that's, you know, I, I don't think it gets any more detailed than that. You know, that's that just is a... It's a reflection of, of how you carry your, your, your coaching style, for sure. Thank you. Um, well, if there were one piece of advice that you could give to a young coach who is trying to build a long-lasting program, what would that be? Don't quit. When the going gets hard, don't quit. Be patient. Use the people around you. Get some rest. Okay, talk to people, talk to other coaches. Don't isolate from the parents that you can get support from. Okay, that's important because they need to be your supporters. Taking care of yourself is really important because when you do that, you're going to last a lot longer. There's too many coaches that are leaving the profession for a lot of reasons. I see it on social media. It's, it's really sad. And I understand the difficulty that's out there. But just don't quit. It's, it's if you can endure the hard times. And don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, I've had some hard times. I mean, I've had issues that have come up and I've had to go through them and with kids and parents and whatever, you know, uh, but you just, you just have to work through those times because the, the good times outweigh the bad times. They really do. And ultimately it's all about the game. It's all about the game and working with the players and giving those girls the opportunities and that's what it's all about. It's not about the wins and the losses. I mean, they're going to come. If you're doing things right, eventually you're going to win some games. But it's really not about the wins and the losses. Ultimately, it's about them coming back with their degrees. It's about them coming back and saying, hey, coach, you want to go out to lunch? It, you know, it's putting together the alumni days and having them come back to see you. You know, it, it's getting the text messages on your birthdays, you know, it, it's all those, those things. It's them bringing their kids back, you know, and them saying, Hey, this, this was my coach, <laughs> you know, it's all those things and knowing that they've become independent young women. Well, that is certainly great advice. And I think if there's anyone that you should take advice from when it comes to softball or just, generally being a kind human being you're looking at her right here mary joe truesdale i feel like we could chat for hours uh about your coaching philosophies your experiences and and just your life in general but we only have so much time on this thing but uh it has been an absolute honor and a privilege to have been able to cover sheldon high school over the past 
you know, however long I've been doing this. Um, but uh, it's you will certainly be missed. This this area is not going to be the same without you in the dugout. And uh, I hope you enjoy a well earned retirement. And I appreciate you so much for joining us here on Premier Preps this week. Thank you, Nick. You do a great job. Keep it up. Oh, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you telling me that. And you are obviously welcome back anytime. Thank you so much. I cannot thank Mary Jo Truesdale enough for taking some time and joining us this week. I do indeed still carry my marble around in my camera bag wherever I go. So Mary Jo, thank you for joining us. Thank you for including me on such a wonderful tradition. Enjoy retirement and just know that you will be missed. Well, now we're going to get to the teams who were playing for all the marbles in the Baseball NorCal Championships. In total, throughout baseball and softball, a whopping 10 Sac Joaquin section teams still remain to compete for a NorCal title. But we decided to check out the rubber match between Oakmont and Central Catholic. The Raiders beat the Vikings in last year's NorCal final, but the Vikings got some payback in this year's Sac Joaquin section championship game. The stakes just keep getting higher between these two in what has become a fantastic trilogy, Oakmont and Central Catholic playing for all the marbles on Saturday. It's the rubber match of three championship baseball games between Oakmont and Central Catholic. This time it's for the NorCal title. Ding, 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 let's go. Top one, the Raiders threaten early, loading the bases with two outs, but Oakmont starter Brady Fern brushes a little dirt off his shoulder and gets the pop-up to get out of the jam unscathed. Bottom one, Central Catholic starter Wesley Payne giving an early shout out to his right fielder, Adrian Garcia. Agar showing off the leather and keeping the Vikings off the bases in the first. And then after a 1-2-3 inning on the mound, Wesley Payne, I came to bring the pain hardcore from the brain. A one out double sparks a rally for the Raiders. And two batters later, runners on second and third for Tyler Paul Wentworth. And TP is productive even when he's not getting hits. An RBI ground out gives CC a 1-0 lead. And the next batter, Caden McHenry, the sophomore who's got next at Central Catholic, ropes a liner into center. Joe Salicup scores and the Raiders lead 2-0. But the Vikings respond immediately in the bottom of the second. Runners at second and third for KC Tibbetts. His coaches call him Big Game KC for the way he's played in this postseason, living up to his nickname right here with a two-run double. We're all tied up at two, and the very next batter, Brady Fern, helps his own cause, trading places with Tibbetts for an RBI double, and Oakmont leads three to two, but the Vikes weren't finished in the second. Trevor Wilson up with two outs. He legs out an infield single. The ball squirts away. Fern comes in to score. Oakmont goes for four in the second and leads four to two. Bottom three now, two on for Cooper Kunis, the leadoff hitter for the Vikes. He goes back up the middle to score Gabe Carrillo and Wyatt Penman. That makes it 7-2. to two. And then Trevor Wilson once again with another two-out RBI. Another four spot for the Vikes, who now lead 8-2 after three. Top four, T.P. Wentworth, the Clemson-bound star for Central Catholic, trying to get a rally going for the Raiders and Fresno State-bound Adrian Garcia follows through a couple batters later to bring Wentworth home, and it's 8-3. But just like a cheat sheet in an open note test, Oakmont had all the answers on Saturday. Wyatt Penman deposits one into center. That'll score two more. Oakmont leads 10-3 after four. And in the seventh, Jalen Patterson in to shut the door for the Vikes. Casey Tibbetts to Tony Lira for the final out and cue Freddie Mercury. We are the champions, my friend. Oakmont comes back from deficits in all three NorCal games to give head coach Paul Martinez his first ever NorCal championship as Oakmont ends its season with 30 wins. I mean, we never die. We're never going to quit. We'll, we'll go up against anybody. We can go down 10 runs in the first and we'll still be in the game. I mean, it doesn't matter to us. We've all played together for so long and it's just created a bond, a family, a brotherhood, you know? It's just been great. It's been amazing. When we got down in this game, we didn't think so much. We, like, we didn't think anything of it. 
But like we'll come back, we all stay with each other, you know, we all come together and it's just a brotherhood and that's what's uh, made us a good team. Hey, if you're still playing baseball this time of year, you've had a pretty freaking good season. Let's take a look at all those crowned NorCal champions this past weekend. In Division 1, the Granada Matadors seemed like a team of destiny all season long. They topple St. Mary's, who put together an amazing postseason run for the program's first regional crown. In D2, a rematch of the North Coast section title game, Cardinal Newman once again gets the best of Redwood. This time, it's for the program's first NorCal championship. We just showed you the D3 final. Oakmont wins the rubber match of postseason classics with Central Catholic to give the Vikings their first ever regional crown. We showed you Bradshaw Christian earlier in the show in the D4 opener. Well, in the final, the bar has officially been raised at Bradshaw Christian, which finishes with a school record 32 wins as the Pride knocks off top-seeded Piedmont and claims its second NorCal banner in the past three seasons. And finally in D5, Woodland Christian won its first ever state title in football earlier this year, and now the Cardinals claim their first ever regional championship in baseball. What a year it's been for the Cardinals athletic department. Congratulations to all NorCal champions. Well, I just want to thank Mary Jo Truesdale once more for being a special guest on the show this week. And of course, I want to thank you for always spending some time with us each week and subscribing and following along. I appreciate your support. That is going to do it for the official high school season, but don't trip, Potato Chip. We got you covered for one more show next week. We're going to check out some Optimist All-Star Games which will feature the top talent from throughout the Sac Joaquin section. Plus, we'll have all the plays of the year that we caught on Premier Preps this season. And I might have a special announcement with regards to that. So make sure you subscribe and tune in and follow along on social media so you can get all the updates and info needed for Premier Preps. That's it for this week. I'm Nick Pecorero, and you are watching Premier Preps. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week.